Please make background noise times four for your first comedian right now. It's Chidi! Hello. Hi. You know, um, if you're nervous, really weird stuff happens to your brain. So you, you, you don't see things as they are. So between there and there, I was kind of nervous. And I looked around and I saw these people with these uh, carving knives and forks, <laughs> as if I was on the menu. It's not me tonight, OK? OK, that's just out of the way, so my nerves are gone. Um, on Sunday, late evening, I was at home chilling, relaxing, and I was watching goat racing and, uh, on satellite television. And the girl racing, it was the, it's the round seven of the West Afri African uh, riderless go racing conference. And it's really exciting, it's very, very exciting. And, you know, um, basically you've got uh, six countries, six West African countries, and the top two go to round eight. And then from round eight you can go into the finals. So it's really amazing. And uh, Nigeria was a, had, fi had a 15 point lead. They had um, 145 points. And then next you had Ghana, and they had 130 points. You had sort of Burkina Faso, Mali, and you know, some other countries. And, and the, the thing is, the thing that struck me is that this was after the third round. And the lowest scoring team had 72 points. But in each round, you can only get a maximum of 10 points. So I was wondering, how then did Nigeria have 145 points? <laughs> and the lowest team have 72 points, and everybody was happy with it, so I just said, anyway, okay. So anyway, that's goat racing. But I'm sure some of you don't know what goat racing is. Goat racing, as the name implies, is goats, they race. And they, they race in this oval, and the length of the oval is 331 meters. And you think 331 meters is sort of strange distance, but, if you're from West Africa, actually if you're from Africa, 331 meters is the distance the average man can run if he has a 50 pace head start and is chased by a goat. So 331 meters is the distance he runs. And that's, that's the length of the, uh, the, the oval. So these goats, they race around this oval. And it's really, really exciting, you know? And so basically what happens is you have these super trained goats and um, they chase a monkey. The monkey has, has a, a mushy mango tied to its tail. And the monkey signed a waiver saying that it's personally responsible for any damage that occurs, you know, trampling by goats and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I'm watching this goat racing and it's just amazing, it's amazing. And then suddenly, suddenly, Ghana is disqualified. They're disqualified because they put palm wine 20% palm wine in the water meant for the goats. And I know very few of you have ever had the honor of drinking palm wine, right? If you have, it's amazing. If you haven't, just find it somewhere and drink it. The thing is that um, uh, palm wine, adding palm wine to goats is like going to a racetrack and, and giving a horse duvel. The, some of you are drinking duvel beer. If you give a horse duvel, it sort of turns into a super horse. And they go really fast. So if you go to a racetrack, some of you may have horse friends here, horse connections. Go to a racetrack, don't ever ask for a duvel. Because even if you go there with a super, super royal person, the most royal person in the neighborhood, you'll be thrown out. If you ask for a duvel, you get thrown out. It's just bad news. Anyway, so, so, so Ghana have been disqualified. And I'm thinking, man, this is so exciting. And the doorbell goes. Goes. Ding dong. Hey, Sunday. And I go down. I go down. And it's my cousin Uchen. And, and he, he's. I love him. He's not my favorite cousin. He's sort of one of the most favorite cousins. I, I like him a lot, but I also hate him because he's so smooth. He's like super smooth. He's not smooth because he wants to be smooth. He's just that way. He's so smooth. And 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 it makes me feel ashamed when I'm near him. And, and actually, I don't hate him because he's smooth, but I hate what happens when he is smooth. Because if you go out with him in public, there are two things that may happen. The first thing that happens is people, they just really like him. 
and they start, mainly women, but some men as well, they just start rubbing themselves on his body. They just start rubbing, like rubbing, they're just rubbing themselves, just rubbing. I just said, what is this? And I, I mean, I don't mind the rubbing, he's just there saying, okay, well, yeah, that's nice, wonderful, thank you very much, just, just a little bit more, oh, wonderful, you're so kind. That's okay, consenting adults, but the trouble is, the trouble is, in order to rub themselves on him, they climb over me. And it's only women who do this, it's only women who quietly step onto my head and they just start rubbing him. And you know all this rubbish, this stupid idea that sort of, oh, women are so dainty. No, you're not, you're just wild animals. You're terrible. Just, and, and, and I saw a couple of familiar feet in the audience, so I just want to say to you, I'm not going to mention you, but let me just say, standing on somebody's head is not a good way to talk to somebody else. Okay? Good. So anyway, good. It's uh, Sunday evening, bell goes, go downstairs, there's my cousin, Uche. And I say, hey Uche, what's up? He says, I'm good, take this. And he shoves something into my hand, and he says, um, explanation, the instructions are on the envelope. And I look, and it's an envelope, it's true, it's an envelope, and I've got a dog, he, he's given me his dog. And there's an envelope, and the envelope is, is wrapped around the dog, really securely, sort of like with rope. A lot, a lot of rope, you know, not really so sort of wrapped around, you know, like really, really wrapped around. So it's like maybe 27, 31 minutes to get it fixed, like that kind of wrapping. So I take the dog inside, I look up, and the has gone, he's gone, he's disappeared. So I take the dog inside, cut off, cut off the rope, open the envelope, and there's an explanation. He says, Dear Cousin Chidi, you're my 17th favorite cousin. Which I think is a really stupid thing to say. He could say, Dear Cousin Chidi, he could just say Chidi, but he says, You're my 17th favorite cousin. But because he's so sweet, his handwriting was incredibly smooth. <laughs> incredibly smooth. I couldn't bring it inside myself to demote him from my favorite cousin list. So I kept him there. <laughs> anyway, so he explains that, listen, I have to go on a business trip, right? And I would have given my dog to my left side neighbor. My left side neighbor broke his leg. So the left side neighbor broke his leg, but he has a backup neighbor downstairs who usually looks after the left side neighbor. But she had a heart attack. And then, so he's got another, the family in front, they're sort of like the backup for the backup of this one. But they had food poisoning, and it was really, it was terrible. So basically 17 households in his flat were all taken ill. And so that meant I had to look after the dog. And I'm not an animal, I don't really like, I don't dislike animals, but I don't like animals. I mean, I just like this dog, okay. So I've, I've got this dog, and um, uh, the dog, it's actually a Nigerian Wonder Poodle. And um, Nigerian Wonder Poodles, uh, they're sort of green at the back, white here, and they've got this perfect round afro. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> and uh, I look at the dog, and the dog's kind of leaning like this, just looking at me. And I wasn't really sure what to do. And I looked at the dog, and he sort of looked at me, and I looked at the dog, and looked at me, and I said, Okay, you can stay. <laughs> and the dog was so happy, it just started running around the house. Not just like this, but it was actually running along the ceiling. <laughs> it did about 17 times. And then it landed, and it came to me, ha ha. I said, oh, good doggy. Thank you very much. <laughs>